Kia ora e hoa Hello, my friends, and welcome to Auckland, New Zealand, to the stage for the 36th America's Cup. It's day three of the Prada Cup Challenger Series, and another point-scoring opportunity awaits the teams this afternoon. Yesterday, light air conditions. Today, the wind hits the upper limits, and that could be the magic that Terry Hutchinson and his crew need in search of their very first win. It's Luna Rossa pulling double duty today, and in the words of Francesco Bruni, it's a super Sunday and the chance to collect two points. And oh, how valuable they are. The team with the most points at the end of the round robin phase goes directly to the Prada Cup final. Enios Team UK with three from three will be eyeing that automatic spot. But Luna Rossa are coming. American Magic just need to break the shackles and score. Four races down in the round robin series, eight to go, and you can guarantee that today in stronger wind, the teams are going to learn something else about themselves and their boats. Both winners from yesterday are first to race today. Enios will relish the predicted heavier conditions, and then American Magic are back into the fray in the race that will complete round robin number two. It is on. Round Robin 2, race number 2, challenger of record against Enios Team UK. Currently, the form boat in this Prada Cup challenger series on day number 3. And the cameras that we have on board all over the place, along with our microphones, showing you, just like that shot, how crazy this weather is today. Man, I'm excited. Bring it on. This is, uh, this is that gear-busting kind of... You kind of have a feeling when you leave the dock on a day like today that's going to be a little bit different. You got to hold on, Nathan. This is this is something that you can't break the boat, but at the same time, nobody's going to let you back off because if you do, you're going to lose. Yeah, it's definitely rough out there today, isn't it? Check out the waves and these boats. You know, most of these teams have been always sailing in the flat water. You know, they probably would have been expecting to be in the back paddock or in the harbouring conditions like this, but they're out there in, in the roughest part of the harbour today. So are you surprised they went to this race course? I'm a little shocked that we're out here. I don't think many of the teams were thinking they were going to have to sail in these conditions and these kind of waves. I reckon they thought they'd be in flatter, more protective conditions, but it's going to be a good test for the structure of these boats, isn't it? Let's be blunt, though. Either of you, you would love the chance to be on a wheel out there today, wouldn't you? <laughs> Come on. Of, of course. But at the same time, this is kind of comfy sitting here with you, uh, you know, second-guessing everything that's going on out there. There's nothing wrong with that. Just under three and a half minutes to race start, and race number two of round robin number two will complete, hopefully, this round robin stage today. We have heard from race management there's a big shift coming, and potentially uh, that could they... Way, how about that? That gives you an idea of what the conditions are like. Francesco Bruni getting his early shower. Uh, can you imagine what it's going to be like when these boats are up and falling at speed. We know and we've been blessed to be showing pictures prior to so you seeing these ones getting close to 50 knots and, 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 and getting themselves in the gear. Well, they'll be pushing the boats hard, but it's so bumpy that you can't push these boats too hard. And, you know, Ken made a good point. You've, you know, to finish first, you've got to first finish, right? You've got to make sure you get this boat around the course, keep it upright. And I think it's going to be a game of managing the throttle going fast when you know you've got control and then backing it off when it's time to you know, keep it under control. Luna Rossa have port entry on this race, race number two, and it'll be starboard entry for Enios Team UK. The exciting part of this, that boat in front of you, what are they going to be like in these wild conditions? It just looks marginal, doesn't it? I mean, it, it just feels marginal. <laughs> The two minutes and 10 seconds they are allowed in on the port entry and in come at pace and real pace for the first time. And this is Luna Rosa Prada Rally. And then from the two minute mark in come on the starboard entry is Enios Team UK. There is a lot of work going on out there. There are a lot of questions uh, today in, with, for both of these boats. Enios uh, was notoriously a heavy air boat in the past, but their light air performance the last couple of days means maybe they've changed. And on the other hand, We've always thought the Italians struggling in a breeze. Let's see them prove otherwise today. Watch the bow. Yeah, got it. Okay, move two more, turn up. Don't come to your bow up. Very negative. Got it. Negative. Everybody better away. Okay, two. two. One. Betting away. Got it. We're on board both boats listening in to so whatever the strategies okay, might back. be with yeah. only about a minute to go before the start. 
Here's a decision for Ainsley right now. Will he tap before, or does he think they're early and, and push them from behind and tap after? Looks like he's going to be a pusher this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll speed. I bought up. Can I tap? Yep. I pitch. Crossing. Four down. Turning. Yep. Okay, game board. Okay. This is the umpire's boundary penalty GBR, boundary penalty GBR. That's an unforced error, out of bounds in the pre-start, you can see the white man just went out of bounds. That's handing the right to start to your competitor, isn't it? So an unforced error by any else Team UK in the pre-start area. Boundary penalty, 10 seconds to go at the start. Here you go, guys. Okay, stand up for a big clean on, boys. Okay, I've got it. Here, Ben. Okay, no, I'm on the wheel. Your wheel. Clean on. On the wind. Yeah, coming. He's on. Round Robin 2, race number 2. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, Ineos Team UK, away in some of the most challenging conditions we have seen to date. That penalty gets cleared by them being two boat lengths behind right off the starting line. So Ineos is back in the game, but man, what an unforced error. Not a great way to, to start this race. One, two, one, two. You guys can hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm all the GP, they are right behind us. Let's focus. Yep. I'm surprised he's staying on his hip there for so long. I would have thought Ben Ainsley would have looked to tack to get out of this position. He's only getting further behind in the dirty air of the rest of it. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot more chatter for the Italian boat right now. There's a... Uh, I, I, I can't say what, what if the phrase is right now, but it, it is marginal out there. Let's put it that way. And Kenny, they're only going up into the moment. Wait till they get to the top mark enough to turn these boats down wind and puncture of these waves. But what we're experiencing right now, what we get to view is it's a boat speed race. We're trying to see who's the fastest boat in these conditions. Shirley, on the water, how is it out there? Nice and bumpy for you? Yeah, I'm trying not to look at the monitor too much. It's really bumpy. Uh, Nathan, I, I wonder if Ben Ainsley is sort of protecting the left a, a little bit. The forecast is for the breeze to go left. And when I've noticed the puffs dropping, they're left-hand puffs, so, you know, you wouldn't want to get to the right-hand yeah, side. He wants to yeah, keep it nice and button. tight and nice and close. Easy. Okay, thanks. Well, we've got yeah. straight. Back in here now. Copy. Yeah. 75. Nothing too big on the race course. I think yeah. boundary to boundary at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Both feels good. Yes, a little okay. bit lighter here. Okay, and pressure in two. Ready. Two, one, board down. You're going to see the Italians tack right in front of Ainsley on this on this maneuver. They, they'll have plenty of time to set it up. And they don't. Okay, Let's go with him here. <laughs> it's first. Stand by tank, boys. This, one reason why they may not have, Nathan, is this race course is so narrow, they're just trying to minimize maneuvers right now, and knowing that maneuvers kind of lend themselves towards uh, breaking gear possibly at the same time. You, know, you never know about those things, but I'm kind of surprised they gave him free air right there. Well, as you say, it could be an opportunity here where uh, Luna Rossa can sail across all the way to the left-hand boundary, tack and make the top marks in one, whereas Ineos might still have two more tacks to go and tack loss we always know there's a tack loss but I think when it's wavier the tack loss is even higher. No surprise that there is plenty of speed out on the course today. Luna Rosa Prada very sitting around 34 knots as is Ineos team because they're, they're running at around 40 miles an hour which is 65 k's so that's pretty quick enough in these conditions when you're hanging on 40 miles an hour up wind and you heard Francesco Bruni repeatedly on this be kind of reassuringly to the group saying guys we're going well we're going well it's almost like he sounds a little bit surprised Three, two, set up, one, four down, two, one, four down. Again, turning. 
Both roads, boats approach the ley line, which means they're going to be on probably their final uh, line into that first gate. And then we're going to see the fast bear away as they go around the marks. This is when the control is the scariest for these boats as they're trying to go around these marks. Yeah, they tried. Uh, think we're better off. Uh, not rush, not, not rush. Rosa, Prada Pirelli, approaching the top gate for the first time. Six legs, they will start the downwind leg, and that'll be leg number two, but they go around that mark for the first time. What's the gap to Ineos Team UK? Keep your eye on the bottom screen, the bottom right of the screen, and that is the time gap difference. 11 seconds. Looks like Ainsley just tried to keep that race close, Nathan, on the first leg. Let's not try anything crazy. Let's not do a big split. Let's not look for something that isn't there. Uh, and see, see, kind of get a feel for what the boat speeds are compared to the two boats. First time we've seen him behind in any of these races, too. So, you know, what we've seen so far is the team that's had the best start is generally won these races. Get it up, get it up, get it Sounds like there's a bit of um, chat on board, Ben, ain't it? I think it's getting lighter, and I think as it gets lighter with this sea set, the boats are going to get harder and harder to sail. Shirley, on the water, is it, is it dropping there? Have you got any inside knowledge for us? Yeah, that's a good call, Nathan. You know, you know there's a lot of rain coming, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of areas with a little bit of, of less wind. That's exactly what happened. And remember, they're quite underpowered as well. Small sails on. And really, you know, you're really going to have to be dynamic with your setup to get through those lulls. But yeah, you know, have small enough sails that, you know, when the breeze hits, you're going to be all right. So different challenges. If there are lulls on the course, when you've got the sort of sails for these supposedly stronger conditions, 42 knots downwind, and that is Ineos Team UK, as opposed to around 37 knots for Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli on leg two of six. Nothing behind us, right? No. It's all, all on the left yeah. looking up wind. So that's the voice of Jimmy Spittle of Luna Rossa talking about the pressure and saying the breeze is stronger on the left-hand side of the course. So they're really trying to talk tactics about how do they go around these sort of marks and get themselves into this new pressure lane, this, this front that we've been talking about that's coming from the west coast. And uh, if it comes in the middle of this race, tacticians are going to have their work cut out for them. Not the smoothest of jives that we've seen from this from this group. You can see the gap closes up so quickly with one tiny mistake. They're really in the one mistake zone right now. That 200 meter zone is, is really one mistake away, and you can see they almost have the distance the Brits did just on that one little slider during the jive. Come down, come down, come down very fast, yeah. Easy. Trim, ragazzi. Trim. Pressure and right a little bit. Come down, come down, trim. Pull forward. Getting close. No, no, a little further, sorry. All good. Like cross after. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got time to cross yeah, yeah. after. A little bit more pressure right now on the right up. Two, one, four, down. Okay. 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 Both boats here on their final approach to the bottom gate. Looks like both teams trying to set up to take the right-hand mark or the left-hand mark as we look at here, getting out to that left-hand side of the track to try and get into better pressure. I don't think Ben Ainsley's laid it, though, so I think no. we're going to have a split here at the bottom mark. Exactly. He's one and in for Ainsley, and hopefully straight in if you're an Italian fan. And again, here comes these gear-busting moments of rounding these marks and fully loading the boat side. Three, two, one, here we go. Turning. Luna Rossa, turning. Wow. 
maintaining their lead with a mini splashdown at the bottom gate for the first time. They were 11 seconds ahead at the top gate. What will it be at the bottom gate? They're doing a head count and they all stay on board the boat. Oh, we knew this was going to be hard, but this is brutal. 17 seconds, though. They've eked out a six second gap further on any of TV. Hey, guys, just go. It's marginal. Just when these guys are crossing right now, imagine if the boat goes down and all that water is flying over the deck and somebody's trying to cross at the same time. It's looking really hard for the guys sailing the boat. See, all the hour before this race, the breeze had been up. It had been over 20 knots. Here we go. I'm looking at the, uh, the bottom mark around in here. Coming in. Check out the foil on the little inside here. They're bow punching through the waves. That there makes the boat really hard to turn. The foil, you can see the white water coming off the Lillard foil and big drop there. That's a massive drop in speed. And then Ben Ainsley sets up to go to the other mark and he's struggling just as much. So clearly um, teams are struggling out there handling the boats in the sea state. It's not the wind strength, it's the sea state. Here we go, all the way. Three, two, one, here we go. And that was the onboard moment. Oh, it's so... Remember how you asked us early in the piece whether we'd like to be out there driving? This is, this is a nice seat, right? We've got the best seats in the house here in our, in our little room with all of our monitors watching these guys go crazy out there. We do have to pose the question on leg three of six. We're getting towards the halfway point of race two, round robber number two, about Luna Rossa in heavier conditions. And, and the way that boat's set up and how it's falling right now, what do you make of it, mate? Well, they look pretty quick to me. They look like they obviously had a great start, but when the boat punches through the water, yes, there's a lot of white water, but it's not getting fully off balance. You can see the bow touching here every now and then. It sounds like they're about to tack here, rolling into attack. The bigger foils and the bigger waves are going to have more grip, and that bigger flap is going to give the boat a bit more control. Interesting tactics right now going on. I'm, I'm surprised that they've opened up let the left-hand side here to Ben Ainsley. Maybe they're trying to sell their own race and look at that. They look like they've got a right-hand shift now. But um, surely the, the, the weather out there, it looks like it's trending down. How far away is this front that we keep talking about or is it is it not going to come in this race? Okay, ready? Nathan, uh, I'm not sure about the front. I don't think it will get to us yet, but there is rain coming down the left-hand side of the course. And normally with a rain cloud, you know, there's, there's more wind and it's shifted round uh, to the side that it's coming down on. So what well, Ben has tagged now, but definitely there's something happening which may well, which may well happen in, in, the, in the, next, the next loop of this race. With both boats splashing down at that lured mark, Stephen, at that lured gate, it looks like the the issue on Luna Rosa was a little less than the issue, and they've really they've almost again doubled the doubled the lead based on two mistakes. Your your mistake was just a little less than the other guy's mistake. That's all. And I wonder too, uh, Francesco Bruni in the press conference yesterday asking about heavier conditions, and I think the line was. We have no speed deficit in heavier conditions, and we're seeing that. Well, he, he's been saying that all along, by the way, and maybe we should just listen to him every once in a while. We create, we have these preconceived notions over what we've seen before in past races, but the fact is, as we keep talking about, there is changes to these boats every single day. They've obviously found something here. Well, Kenny, do you think by then putting those running backstays back on and tensioning that four stay might have just given them that upwind speed that they were missing in the stronger breeze? Well, there's no question that that makes the whole package above the deck, the engine above the deck, more adaptable, more, uh, more, you can change, you can change gears. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I think they've used them a, a lot of times in the breeze. We noticed in light air the other day, they have the running backstays on. They've been forced to put the running backstays back on the boat by the arbitration uh, committee, but they didn't even use them the other day. They were flapping in the breeze. Today, we can obviously see that the weather running backstay is tight, and the lured one is loose, flapping in the breeze, so they are using it to control the sail plan. Sounds right to me. Sounds smart to me. That one cable, the forward cable, is the one on the weather side, on the windward side, that's being used, and that's helping not only create great or not create mass spend, but it's also getting the head stay tighter and, and creating a flatter jib at the same time.
Okay, my rudder. My rudder. Trav. My trap. Yeah. Steven, nice little lead for Luna Rosa. They, this has been a good leg for them, and, and that kind of easy staying okay, wide against your opponents, it's obviously worked. Five, in three. Pressure on tracing. Two, one, clear. Got Luna boys. Rossa Prada Pirelli at the top gate for the second time and rounding the mark. The advantage was 17 seconds at the bottom gate. Has this been a productive leg for the challenger of record? Keep your eye on that clock. We love the clock, don't we, Kenny? Just to see what the, the advantage is. Don't and get me started okay. again on this clock. Yep. And they have really... Put the hammer down, Luna Rossa. Pressure again, three. Keep pressing, guys. Okay, my wheel here. Okay. Ineos, Team UK, who are three from three at the moment. And the deficit is blowing out somewhat. Now 44 okay. seconds. Okay, hold on My there. word, My that's a performance right now from the Italians. Yeah, so Nathan, we've talked a, a lot about you can't be fast in all conditions. And well, frankly, we, I think the sailing world was a bit surprised Nathan, yesterday at, at the strength of this boat in the lighter air. You got it. If you're gonna if you're gonna get fast in one condition, very often you take it away from the other. You think that we're seeing a little bit of that? Well, I think we're seeing a little bit of that, but. It's, it's not just the wind strength that they mowed these boats for, it's the sea state. You know, the race that they won against Luna Rossa on the first day was similar wind strengths to this. The only difference I can see right now is the size of these waves and the fact that they didn't win the start. It's, it's becoming a bit of a trend, like you said earlier in the week, the starting in that first cross is critical. But what I'm also seeing is this one boat's just sailing away from the other boat. So maybe the sea state is to the Luna Rossa's advantage. They did a lot of sailing in the Mediterranean, quite big waves in the lead up to coming here. Perhaps the training that they've done there, and it's not so much maybe the equipment, but how you're handling the foils, how you're trimming the sails, how you're dealing with the elements. Okay, my rudder. Nathan, I'll, I'll just jump in there. We are on the left-hand side of the racetrack, and it's really cold no, air, it's a lot, place. lot windier. Um, so expect them yeah. to sort of be thinking about that in this this next oh, yeah. wind. There's a ton more wind yeah. on the left-hand side. The all the time. Thank you, Shirley. Could be some action on this final lap. Looking forward to that. And I guess they're going to be trying to work out at what time do they need to push left to get into that new pressure. Uh, yeah, we got right turn bias. Yeah, right turn bias, 35 metres. That volume three hit. We have better pressure than him here? Uh, yeah, better pressure coming down onto him all the time. Bad wave coming. Just so that could now, be the new pressure coming down right now. Save the move. Right He's now, go as we look at this picture, the wind's coming from the, the right-hand side. It's going to be a big shift through this race. It's coming in off that beach. Yeah, they, they, they can see it. Talking about it. They can see it. They're okay, talking so about it, absolutely. So they, and down. they're just, they, they we, we actually we have we the distance because they're getting into that shift first on Ineos Team UK. Stand by, stand by. Go pitch. A lot of chatter, though. This is going to get exciting. A lot of chatter at this green string. This is going to pick up the way we think it might. I'm just trying to get one of them left. Now he's committing to it himself. He's still down inside us as much as we can here. It's just gonna do it's gonna go ninety degrees left in about a minute. My pitch. He's so ninety you're degrees left. That's a massive wind shift now. to the left hand yeah, side of the course. Dimo in the boundary here. Yeah. But the big thing is can right. they so actually come up. play right. the mark? If Cross it goes six. ninety degrees left, do they even have to jive? This is gonna create some real confusion. Okay, building a bit of speed here, Ben. Yeah, they've got super light where they are. That's getting light, and you can see they're going a long way past that artificial ley line that we put up there. Look at that. Look at all the birds on the front side of the front, you know, getting pushed. Huge, huge wind shift. Off the foils, this is about to get turned on its head, this race, once again. If you're, if you're the regatta director, you got to be thinking, is this a fair contest at this stage? It's such a massive wind shift. Look at that jive by Ineos Team UK. Very nice jive. They've taken the lead here. 
You can see the dark pressure on the top left of our pitch in the left hand corner. That's where the new pressure's come from. It's calmed down with Ineos Team UK and they've taken the lead. And even a darker line, Stephen, out behind these guys coming. Come down, bend for the gate. I can't see it. Come down, okay. Four down, four down, all the way down. Happy to join, happy to join. Giant turn up, giant turn up, yeah. Giant turn up. Pivotal moment in race number two, round one or two. As they touch down Ineos Team UK, they were trailing by 44 seconds at the top gate. Both boats pretty close to out of control because of the wind shift right now. It's because of this big, big wind shift. It looks to be a lull in front of a big puff that's coming across the race course. Shirley, what can you see? Yeah, we are to the left-hand side of the racetrack. I mean, it's it's a good 25 knots here. It's coming off the land. It's it's full on here, and it's about to hit them in in literally seconds. When it hits them, Stephen, there's a big choice for our race director uh, whether because they're going to fetch this this next gate in one in one hitch on Port Tack, they're going to have a straight shot. It doesn't become a windward lured race course anymore. It becomes essentially a reaching race course when that happens. Eight knots, seven and a half. Forty seconds. It's gone from a 44 second deficit to a 40 second advantage for Enios Team UK. But there are other come on, you've got to ease it. Questions in play. Okay, that's it. Okay. So Luna Rossa Prada pretty look like they're almost about to do an attack here at the bottom mark. Ineos Team UK sailing towards the, the bottom of our pitch here. You can see the pressure on the water. It's all about who gets it and gets on the foil and gets ripping towards the top mark. It's just ominous out there. Like, the breeze isn't there yet, but it's about to get ugly. Go, first team up and foiling now, the attacking yeah, before they go out of bounds. Got to attack, guys. Breakout, breakout. This is the race committee. We will be abandoning this race there we go. and resailing it. So, race abandonment. And a restart, resail. Frank's might have been abandoned. Hang on. Copy. You just stay on the wheel. Yeah, got it. Slow down, boys, for a sec. Ian Murray talked about this before the race. They knew this frontal line was race going committee. to be close. Race committee, race committee, your last. They're not sure if they heard it correctly. So they're asking the race committee if, if the race, in fact, has been abandoned. Race committee, can you please pick your last? They're still racing because I think they're on. Luna Rossa obviously have got the yeah, communications there. Yeah, I'm just calling the boundary yet. Brakes abandoned, brakes abandoned, four down, four down here. Uh, the key thing for these guys now is to not do anything silly and tip the boats over when yeah. this squall of 30 knots comes from. Great job, great job. This is the race committee. The race has been abandoned. We will reset the course and resail the same race. New start time to be advised. Okay. Wow. <laughs> for it's all uh, moment. Uh, One minute you're sailing down when it's 40 knots, and then yeah. you hit, literally hit the stop button. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a typical frontal passage. You know, you get that lull, and then the, the amazing thing was all those birds out in front, that they're being pushed by the pressure. You see them here approaching the bottom mark. This is a replay from that bottom mark. Ineos team UK trying to keep it on the foil. And just, just park, you know, and Luna Ross to do the same. You can see all the white water coming off those foils. That's because they're sailing in chop. They're in the waves, and the ride height becomes super critical. So I have to ask the question. Folks are going to be watching this going, well, hang on a minute. they got a lead. Yes, the conditions change suddenly. Why the race abandoned? So that is always something that is uh, the most talked about in our sport. For sure, the race director would have talked to these teams long before this regatta starts as to what people consider a fair race and an unfair race. Listen, I am all for letting these races go. 
in, in that situation because it is what it is. One boat got ahead, the better team ends up winning. Both, but both it, experiencing the same conditions. But it's too. a windward lured race course. I think these. I think the teams and the race director have decided that if we we want to set this race course up upwind against the wind and downwind with the wind. With a big, huge shift like this, it turns into a reach-reach. There really isn't any tactics at that stage. You head for the mark, you head for the mark, takes the tactics away. So, well, Kenny, yesterday a lot of people were saying, well, it was fluky and lied, and, you know, someone even said it was a lottery. Was this more of a lottery in that one, or was this just because it was a massive shift in the race? I think it's just that, that one massive shift. So it was a lottery yesterday, but they were always on an upwind leg and a downwind leg yesterday, right? That's the, that's the big difference. This just turned into a reaching race course. They've, they've decided a long time ago, reaching race courses is not what we're all about. We're about going upwind and we're about going downwind. As far as the entertainment goes, I was all for yeah. the, the change in the lead. Let's just deal with the conditions like anyone would want to see, Kenny. We could debate that for a thousand years. Uh, by the way, I am, I'm, just, I'm just reporting right now. Do I necessarily sometimes agree with that type of decision? I'll, I'll refrain. Well, let's go back and let's just have a look. Here's a big decision in the in the race by Ben Ainsley. Not only did he go unforced out of bounds in the situation, but he decided to push back rather than lead back. He was in a position where he could have tacked to the left of Prada, but he decided to actually continue on, had a boundary penalty, and was late for the start. So really kind of, we haven't seen, we've seen really perfect start almost perfect starts from Ainsley so far this was definitely not only an unforced error but uh probably a, 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 he would he would like that strategy back yeah I think the conditions definitely are playing a part here to how high level these teams are sailing it it was sort of a, a boundary bounce bounce up the first beat Ben was doing a good job of just trying to stay close to Prada and these teams are probably doing a speed check just to see are they fast enough? And Francesco Bruni said they don't think they have issues in strong breeze. And sure enough, they went around the top mark with a nice little lead ahead of them. And we're slowly just stretching it out here. You can see Ben Ainsley following them around the same gate. And as the race was developing until that shift came, Luna Rossa were just slowly gapping them. Yeah, no, no question about it. They look good. They look comfortable, Three, like we talked about two, during the race. Francesco Bruni has told us, except for maybe a little sloppy, but again, like you keep saying, Nathan, the, the the waves are definitely affecting how these boats are sailed, but Francesco Bruni has been telling us all along that, you know what, we think we're okay in a breeze, and sure enough, they look pretty good to us. Now comes the big pass. The frontal passage is coming in. Luna Rosa comes off their foils. It allows Ainsley to go around the outside, but then essentially they both park. It is hard. It is completely, the wind is shifting approximately 90 degrees, a big lull before the action happens, a big lull before the breeze comes firing in from the left-hand side and kind of forces the race to be abandoned by uh, Ian Murray. And Steven, you're shaking your head. They should let them play. Is that what you're saying? Let them play. Yeah. You talk about fair racing, you're both sailing in those conditions. But confirming what you're watching right now, Round Robin 2, race number 2 for the moment. It has been abandoned. We will resail after a course reset. So get ready. More wild times on the water. Certainly not a gloomy day on the Waitamata Harbour, but it is gloomy for the teams because we go to restart. This just reminds you about the efficiency of these boats and help me with the squiggles again. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Italian boat is the green line and the British boat is the orange line. And you can see that the uh, Italians actually had a few, uh, few um, more struggles in their tacks or jibes. There's really not a whole lot in this, Nathan. It, it's two boats. There's no big mistakes here. It, it, let's put it that way. 
No big mistakes, but you can see the average speed is actually to the U UK team, but that's based off the fact that they finally took the lead at the very bottom of the course. This, this graph sort of has on the left-hand side the speeds, and on the right-hand side as we go across, that's just time throughout the race, but there's not a lot in it, and, and that shows how close they were at the bottom mark. You know, what we're really looking for is these wobbles. You see one bad jibe, no, one bad tacky by UK over on the left where kind of went slow for a while, took a while to get back up to speed. Let's just remind you of the key moment in this uh, race that has been abandoned at the end of four legs. A key, key moment was the start. You know, it, it was, it was, Ainsley got himself behind by this decision right here. Uh, Spithill, Spithill and Bruni decide to throw a jibe in right near the lace, race boundary. That puts the pressure on Ainsley. He's got to make a decision right now. Is he going to tack and lead back to the starting line? Or is he going to go beyond and in what's called push and push the other boat back towards the starting line? He decides to go beyond and, and come back and push. But he sails outside the boundary at the same time. So not only was he does he end up being late for the start, it's easy for us to say as they're smashing through waves going 40 knots, uh, he, he he makes a little error and has to drop back two lengths at the start itself to uh, to get rid of his penalty. So not the best, certainly not the best start for Ainsley, but uh, they'll ha they'll have that one back again and uh, and come back fighting next time. So an unforced error by Enios Team UK, but they did get the lead back until race abandonment. But now you have to start thinking about are we, are they racing in too much wind? Well, it would, when they were just showing the boats uh, head to win there, uh, just kind of sitting there, it looked windy. So w when up front passes like this, it's going to be windy for a while. So I'm guessing it's going to be above that racing limit. And we might have to wait a little bit, but that's yet to be seen. We'll probably get to Ian Murray, the race director here shortly, and we can find out what these uh, wind averages are and how close we are. The other thing, they have, they have to turn the whole race course to the left. So that, that, that's, really, uh, that's really the big one. David Carr, part of a 120 strong Ineos organization here to try and take the old mug back home. Restart, 4.35, Lunarosa Prada Pirelli, port entry, starboard entry, Ineos Team UK. Will Mother Nature play ball? The conditions have changed, and now it's time to start thinking about gearing up and getting on with it. Guys have put in some practice practice time in between the, uh, the big squall that pushed through, and now we see, it's, I, I wouldn't call this light conditions out there, Nathan. It's still lumpy, really lumpy. Like Shirley reported a while ago, there's... There's waves coming from all directions with this big wind shift right now, which is typical of that situation. And we're, yeah, we're going to see the stability on the foils. We're going to get another check in on uh, boat speeds for heavy air and off we go. Well, one thing I know is foiling boats don't like waves and uh, these teams will be struggling with that. You know, the flight controllers on both boats are going to have their work cut out for them. Ineos Team UK have got Luke Parkinson and Lee McMillan flying their boat and yeah, we saw how rock solid they were in the flat water the last couple of days, but they might have a chance to recalibrate from that last race, and the sea state is all over the place, so it's, uh, it's not a job I'd be wanting, that's for sure. On to the water with Shirley Robertson in chase one. Update us on the conditions, Shirley. Well, Stephen, the sun's come out, to be pleased to hear. Uh, it's great conditions. I mean, like, we're near the start areas, but 16 knots of wind. Uh, obviously, the course has been rotated, and now the, the yeah. top end, the top gate, and the top end of the course is actually quite yeah. close into the land. So, I mean, I wonder if, if the teams are getting concerned about the sea state, is whether they, you know, they, they get close in to the shelter of uh, of the land there. If that if that might help, it feels to me there's still plenty of weather in this day. Uh, both boats have gone for pretty small jibs, and I think, you know, they'll have been talking to their meteorologists and expecting you know, plenty of pressure for the next 30 minutes. Well, the one thing we did know is that front was going to come through and change it, and all the forecasts had, once this front passed through, it was going to hold in the northwest direction and be pretty solid in the high teens today. So if, if, we're, if that front is now through, then this breeze should be here to stay, and I think we're going to have pretty windy but it's going to be shiftier than what we saw before because it's starting to come off that land where you can see top marks under the land up there exactly shifty 
shifty and, and that's when you get passes in what looks like reasonably benign situations. So splits at the top gate become that much more dangerous for the boat ahead. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to be real action out here again, and uh, can't wait to see it. You know, the, I bet you Ben Ainsley had a sit down with his team as to talking about what to do in these windy pre-starts. Maybe we see a little bit of different action out of Ben after not quite doing that first start sequence a little while ago very well. Heading towards the two minute and ten second mark, which will then allow. Luna Rossa at the port entry into the pre-start area. And then at two minutes, Enios will be allowed to come in and start the joust. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, can sit. Of course. Easy. Luna Rossa is in. Both boats cautious coming into that starting box. We call the starting box. You have to cross over that red line, that starting line, and get down below it towards us at the bottom of our screen. That's what we call the starting box. That's where the two boats jockey for position. Really, trying to screw up your, your opponent. You know, that, that's, your, that's your whole goal in life, is to try to get between you and the opponent and the starting line. Your wheel, my wheel. So, Ken, besides the obvious of not going out of bounds here for Ben Ainsley, what is his move to win this start? Are you, all you're trying to do at this stage is judge whether Jimmy Spithill and Francisco Bruni are late, early, or on time from the start. He's in a, he's in a dominant position, but he's got to have a good feel for where they are on their timing sequence heading back to the starting line. Coming up here. Yep. 60 seconds to restart. Race two, round robin two. He's, he's he lazy picked up a penalty for a boundary penalty the last time on, out. Up. Yep. Two, two, behind one. again. So he one. thinks Luna Rosa is early or he just wants the right hand side. Luna Rosa puts the brakes on just to try to slow down and get him to catch up and get him in a tight spot. But he tapped much earlier this time, which means he can't push, but I think he's late. I think Francesco Bruni and Jimmy Spiller are turning back at the right time and make it really difficult for Ben Ainsley in this one. Under 30 seconds to start. Listen to the chat on board. This is Ineos. Coming up, the Yep. He's a touch. Charge. Yeah, we're j just on time. Killing maybe one. That'll be alright. Okay, okay, got us racing now. Okay. Your wheel. My wheel on the out of this. Tacking out of this. Okay. Copy. Okay. okay. Go, go, Your go, wheel. Go, go, yeah. go. Going straight. Going straight. Going straight. Your wheel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, here. Guys. Uh, Restart, yeah, race two, round down, robin down, two. Luna Rossa, Enios TVK. Okay. Okay. Yes. You know, Ainsley kind okay, of go. got go. out of that a little bit, Nathan. Okay, but I'm surprised he hung on. He got a little greedy there for a second. He had a gap off of about one boat length to the right or to the weather of Prada. And, and all of a sudden, instead of... We're going to tack out of this, guys. He tried to hold and actually I fell back a length or two before they finally yeah, tacked. Right. Yeah, first time I've seen a bit of indecision yeah. from that. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, yeah. They, the last two days, they make a call, they stick to it. That time, they change their mind. They've made the first tack, and this is all going to be about which side of the course is going to be favoured as to who's going to be in front when they come back together. Yeah, I think we sail to it. On board, Luna Rosa. Stand by. Three, two, one. Pressure out of this. Steven, this is what, when we always leg, refer to the throat. first cross, winning and losing the start is almost irrelevant. It's almost like the clock at the, at the marks. It's almost irrelevant. This is the relevance. This is what a start sets up, is the first cross. How do you read this first cross coming up, Nathan? Get pressure on here now. Nice. Well, let's let them tell us all about it. But it looks like Luna Rossa might just cross. Just cross, cross. Just cross. Start to take advantage to Ineos. Yeah. Take it. Early call. Got a stocking. Take it. Stocking. Stocking. Yeah. My wheel. Yeah. My wheel. Yeah. Clearing transom two one now. 
So the real question is, is this boat speed that took the lead? Because they were attacking behind, you know, they've done one, two attacks versus one, or was that a shift? And are they in phase, you know, this wind is shifting left and right out there? Shirley, what do you see on the water? Was that speed or was that pressure? in 10 seconds. I think we keep going though. Pressure okay this way, isn't it, Ben? Well, I, uh, yeah, I'm not certain, as okay. you say, they did okay. one more straight. manoeuvre and they seem pretty keen to moment. get to that yeah. right-hand side and, and to get in phase. Right, it is out. shifting, the wind is up and down and, and remember that it's coming off the land, which is really making it pretty unstable. It has to be shifty, right? It has to be. It, it has completely... It's, the, the breeze has taken a left turn from this morning, coming off the land. It's really an interesting part of these race courses. The boundaries and the narrowness of the course does not allow you sometimes, Stephen, to spread out and really take full advantage of a shift. But when the boundary comes, you got to tack. And so it looks like they're a nice breeze up on the top of the, that dark water up there at the top of the screen, Nathan. Doesn't look so bad for the for the Italians right now. Looks like they've taken the lead back here, but still a couple more tacks to go. And this is what's so interesting with these races is one minute one's in front. And you think, oh, we'll stay in phase, but no, they're just hitting the corners at the moment. They're just bouncing off these boundaries and good chance of a split at the top of the course again. Boat speed sitting around 33 knots, 34 knots of both these AC 75. So there's Plenty of pump out there. Yeah. Shifty though, Ed, this is definitely yeah, wind shifts out there right now, Shirley. We can really see from the helicopter, big dark streaks. We don't get two passes like we've just seen in such a short period of time. Not just passes, but passes with big gaps without a wind shift, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, shifts and velocity and pressure. Also, you, there's a lot of comms on board. So that gives you an indication there's a, there's a ton going on on the racetrack. Three, two, one. Put the water out of this yes. My rake, my trout. Pass in two. Good pass here. Starboard tackle no advantage, which is the boat at the top of the screen, which is Ineos Team UK. But I think that the Italian Stephen look well clear coming into gate number one. So it looks a little wide out of the mouth uh, tonight. For attention, early time, guys. Yeah. Stand by, three away, two. Just like the first start of race number two, Lino Rossa go around the top gate first, and they will be followed through. But a different mark rounding by Ineos Team UK. Last time it was a neck at 11 seconds. This time it's 10 seconds. So the big question is, is who is in phase with this wind? Who is sailing less distance? Who's got more breeze? Boats are just splitting the course at the moment. They're not really staying in phase. It's a very different strategy this race that both boats are playing. And when we talk about staying in phase, for those that are trying to get to grips with, with sailing, sailing in phase is? Well, as as... You would know, if you were a golfer, as you would know, puffs come in from both sides of the course. Puff, uh, it, it'd be wind strength changes, but also directional changes. So you, it's really you're trying to play the two and stay in the most amount of breeze and have that angle working to your advantage to shorten the race course. 42 knots or thereabouts from Ineos Team UK. 40 knots by Lino Rossa Prada Pirelli. Oh, good pop on yeah. now. On board. A little righty, but still got good pressure. Good pressure up here to Wentwood. Copy. Numbers. It, it still blows me away. <laughs> and when they, they're going. 40-ish knots, let's call that 46 miles an hour, or 74K amongst friends. It's just the calmness, right? You just get used to it. You just become immune to these kind of speeds. When you do it day in, day out, 40 knots is nothing for these guys. And I could see Jimmy Spitter there driving the boat, looking over his shoulder, yeah, there's a bit more breeze coming, it's fine. We'll go a little further and drive again. They're in front, so he's obviously a bit calmer. 
Ineos jibed on the far side there. I think that this race is starting to get a little bit closer. Shirley, what do you see on the water? There? We are right beside Luna Rossa. It's interesting you say, you know, you kind of get used to it. I was just thinking how, yeah, how stable that boat is. And we haven't said that for a little while. But my goodness, you know, really, really, really stable. I mean, it hardly moves the distance between the hull and the water. They actually look quick as well. Um, the race course is kind of in two halves. Softer at the top, more wind and more bumpy as, as they get to the second half. Always going to be a lot more chatter as you're getting close to the gate. You've got to decide a whole bunch of different things, and especially which mark on the gate you're going to go around. And that setup is always is a huge factor on whether you can stay in phase with the with the boat behind you or you're ending up with a big split. Two, one, or down. Careful, big waves out of these drives. As the voice of Jimmy Skittle saying, careful, that means don't fly too high because they don't want to jump out of the back of these waves. So it's chopping up as they get further down this track, exactly what Shirley was saying out there. 17 to the left turn. Okay. Nice turn. See what he does. Yeah, copy. Goes straight, it's probably quite good. Yeah, uh, pressure looking better just as I can. Looks like we're going to have a split at the bottom marks here. Yeah. Three, two, one, two, two. Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli maintain their lead in race two round Robin two. It was 10 seconds at the top gate. It's now seven seconds at the bottom gate. So slight gain by Ineos. And a split, even more importantly, a split. It's puffy and shifty out there. We saw in that first leg with two lead changes. Having a split is a very nervous moment if you're the boat in front. A little press, just on the head a little. Just gives so the, open, the, the boat behind an opportunity to get by you. If they're following you, it's quite hard to make a pass unless you're quicker. But right now, Ineos heading out to that side. If they get a right-hand shift or if they get any more breeze, have more breeze than Luna Rossa, They'll have the starb attack advantage on the way back and they could make a pass here. If we go back to that uh, first leg, because we're on leg three of six, that's where Luna Rossa picked up some wind and, and made a huge gain on that first leg up on the right-hand side. Well, Ineos doesn't look like they've gotten further behind right now. They actually have, have a pretty nice angle out there, keeping it close, waiting for Luna Rossa to make that one little mistake or waiting for that wind shift to help get you by. Heading towards the halfway mark on race two. Close cross. Close cross. So gains for the Brits. Well across for that shift. Little shift right at the end there, Nathan. Little, little shift that's when it also across. The, the big question is, is, is the breeze going to go right or left from here? If the breeze goes to the left as you look up the course, then you're also going to take an advantage. If the breeze goes to the right, Luna Ross to get the advantage, right, right, but it doesn't moment. change. Yeah. The boats aren't going to change. Uh, you'll just this stay right. the same distance ahead. Right. But I'm just here. shocked that Luna Rossa aren't uh, covering. Really, I can't Why see they I'm keep really giving, giving these opportunities is, is a bit beyond me. Map tracing is all about getting in front of your competitor right and staying can, between yeah. them and yeah. the marks. Says the speed okay. demon who in Bermuda was the guy splitting the course all the time. How things have changed? Well, it's way more fun to split it up and it gives us something to talk about. But. If we, if we ever got far enough in front, Percy was always saying to me, tackle their face. Well. Okay. Little build here. Yeah, I've got 10 righty there. So 10 righty, that's Giles Scott right. talking about the Copy. actual directional shift of the wind. All these wind instruments on board are helping them keep track of where they are on a right-hand shift or a left-hand shift. So what he really needs is a left-hand shift to get well back up, into this one, otherwise nice they're going to make a bit of a loss here. here. 28 to boundary, I think we just dig into it so we don't sail straight back into the right thing. Yeah, copy. That's one in three. Okay, that's one here. That's set up then. 13 seconds, my pitch. Yeah. Okay, ready? Splitting the breeze right now, Two, Nathan. One, and... one down. 
if you're an Italian fan, you're hoping they can get across quick. This is a real left-hand ship. My wheel. So now's a great moment if you're Luna Rossa to just tap on their face and sort of lock the race down. If they continue, they just keep giving opportunities. Oh, but it's getting close. I think they're going to not be far enough to head to tackle them, so I think we're going to see another split here. That left hand shift worked, and Luna Rossa barely gets across. I think you need a bit more of a lead than that to do it. We're just keeping the race, race alive and interesting for us. Very well off at times. Heading towards the top gate and the completion of leg three of six in this second race of round robber two after a restart. After the initial race was abandoned at the bottom gate and leg number four I wreck my drop. who has got the advantage coming into this gate well i tell you what if Ineos can do it in one from here one more take still good pressure here yeah. it's a good chance they're going to make one again and that's where the lead change might come that was a left hand shift that you heard giles scott over and over about about a minute and a half ago talk about let's sail into this all the way to the boundary they felt their left shift. They wanted to not sail back out of it. This is a real left shift. If Ineos gets any tick back to the right, they're going to be well ahead, I think. Shirley, what can you see? You're following them up the track. There's more pressure out to sea. But yeah, the odd pop on the left. It's not a straightforward decision in any way. Port Starboard coming here, I thought Ineos have the advantage. I don't know mate, copy about that, he's hacking underneath. Copy, it's going to be a split attack, right, right hand turn. Copy, right turn, split, your wheel all the way through. Go, go, board down now, board down now. Board going down now. Get on the puck pitch, Charlie. Bang. My pitch, Parker, my pitch. Still one, clear. Yeah, here we go, very wide. Okay, turn him. Line here. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Finally, you can't talk about this, that stopwatch in the lower right-hand corner. Finally, we haven't seen a dead heat in a while, but Stephen, it's hard to make Stephen McIver speechless, and, and frankly, that just did, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a split again, though. Even Stevens. Holy smokes, another split. Listen, that was all about wind shifts. This is so good for the sport. These are two even boats, Nathan. These are two even boats that a wind shift is actually counting for everything out there in the race course. So we're going to race, but our apologies, too, for some uh, colorful language coming up. Uno Rosa. But this is a race and a half. No gap at the top gate. It was seven seconds to Luna Rosa at the bottom gate, the top gate, leg three, nothing, even. But look at this, that, that shift looks like it's gone left, and looks like Ineos are going to make the cross here, but what I was impressed about there was their tack, their bear away execution. That is not an easy manoeuvre to do. Coming in at full speed, dropping the foil, turning around, coming back where you came from. We saw teams struggling to do that a couple of days ago. Pulling off manoeuvres when it counts is what takes the lead here. Now let's see what Giles Scott does and how he can shut this race down and give them no opportunities. Back wave coming. Yeah, nice work, boys. Pressure going back in 10. So that's us just on intersection. He will not get to that right turn in one. Okay, stand by. Got side pitch. Off pitch. We talked in the pre-start about Giles Scott being freed up to be a real full-time tactician. This race okay. is showing me that that is exactly light, the case. He, he is a real, he's a full-time tactician. Yeah, he doesn't have to fly the boat or drive the boat. He's eyes out of the boat. And watch him start to play match racing tactics that maybe Jimmy and Bruni can't do because they're always focused on flying the boat. I agree. Sorry, I should have given you the pressure inside there. It was slightly better. Copy. Okay, now learn that then. Uh, he drives, he's going to do left turn. Yep. Drive up, boys. Nothing.
nothing at the top gate to complete leg three as we approach the bottom gate. Shirley, what do you make of this race? There's so much going on on the race course. I mean, it's so strong to have a dedicated tactician painting the picture the entire time. And we're not hearing those comps coming off Prada. Whatever boat you're sailing, but especially if you're doing 38 knots down here, it's so crucial to have that and have eyes out the boat. You know, it's really interesting. All okay. these, all like these races, all these yeah. race courses have been influenced okay, by in land, here, and that yeah. means it's going to yeah, inherently right be moment, shiftier guys. out on the water. And that does, that lends itself. Now, if this is a flat out, come off the ocean, non shifty breeze, then the Giles Scotts of the world are taken out of it a little bit. But not in this case. And when you're in Auckland, there is plenty of land on every course, and it's all about sailing smart. And, you know, I said earlier, it's a speed race. I think I'm wrong. I think it's a tactician. Okay, ready? Two, one. Yep. In the off team UK, rounding the bottom gate to complete four legs of six, and it is an official lead change. They were behind 10 seconds the first, seven of the second, nothing at the third, and now they are building a lead on Luno Rosa. Two, one, up. 26 seconds the gap from Ineos to Luna Rossa. Gotta love that clock. So once again we have a split. Boats go different marks, but this is a pretty substantial lead. And they're gonna attack right on the boundary here. I was shocked, I thought Giles Scott might attack early to get in phase so that on the next tack they can attack right on the face, but maybe he's seen pressure on the left that we in the commentary box can't see. This is a big cross in this. We are clear across. Okay, little speed build there. Nice. Yeah. Just holding it this left in there. Yeah. Fading a little bit. The question is, is that looks like quite a substantial lead. We're about we, 30 lengths across. Do they go past it or do they tackle their face? Yeah, we'll just tack on him. There yeah, I go. think we go in 20 or so here. Yeah. Yeah. Set up, set up. Crossing. Yeah, anytime here. Two, one, board down. Turning. Two, one, board down. Three, two, one, board down. Okay, board. My yep. hitch. My wheel. Okay, getting lighter here, nice, guys. Nice. Okay. The commentary from off these boats is priceless. You can just hear, again, for all you sailors back at home, what a conversation between a tactician and a helmsman should sound like. How's pressure we think this way, Ben? Yeah, it's OK. I don't think we want to go too far. Looks like there's pressure at about 20. Copy. We'll use that. He's back on port now. Okay, give a tiny bit here. Yeah. Up on the pressure now. Better pressure this way, isn't it? Just going right. Hit breeze here. It's that balance Nothing between sailing right your opponent and okay. sailing the breeze and trying to work yeah, out which one you want. But remember, in all the right previous for, uh, racing okay. in that Christmas up, series, Ainsley could never look around yeah. because that he was two, always one, fighting the down. boat. Here he is actually looking around the race course right okay. now, and the boat is kind of sailing itself a little bit. If, I mean, if you, yeah. if you yeah. get the boat going 40 knots, it can never sail itself. You know what I mean? I know exactly. I mean, when the boat is in its groove and you've got the guys flying the boat nice. at the correct height, okay. the trimmers are trimming the sails okay. spot on for you. Uh, the rudder gets light, and the boat kind of just tracks and goes where it wants to go. So now Ben can help Giles about yeah. where we want to go, and if they've got good speed, in good right shape, but yeah. this, this yeah. angle, he looks like Luna Rossa aren't going away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Drop it on, boys, on your yeah. He'll come. He's got a marginal, marginal one and in right turn. No, 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 no. Good lead, and now what the tacticians are doing is talking about that race course geometry. Which side do they want to escape this top gate towards? Where do they think the pressure is? 
think he's going to have to go. He'll be lucky to get the right turn from there, I think. Big lefty here for us at the moment. I think he might get that. Okay, stand by here, crossing. Oh, what do you think? Big lefty is a left hand I'm shift out of the race course. Okay, two, one, Breeze has gone to the left. They like it, but they're not going to give that other boat. They're not going to let that other boat out of their sights. Even though they're in a left hand shift, Stephen, in a typical world, they would have continued because it eventually, hopefully, it goes back to the right. They just want to keep control of their competitor right now. This is absolutely a match racing decision and not a wind shift decision. Good pressure. Yeah. Let's try and get on the jars as well. Similar speeds by both teams as they head towards the top gate for the last time in race two round Robin two. And Ineos, Team UK after being 10 seconds behind, are now in front, and we'll check on the margin as they go around the top gate for the final time. Yeah, we've got to hook up into that pressure. Copy. Let's get a bit further. Yeah, I think Charles. Yeah, yours. Lay line in four. Yeah, it's setting up then, crossing. Good pressure out of this. I think this is the lefty, but let's be sure of it. Hey, I'm ready. Hey, Charles. Yeah, mine. Okay. Two, one, board down. A bit slow here. Good. <laughs> Okay, back, back out of this a bit. Okay, that's the wheel course. My wheel. Slightly overstood. Yeah, fine. Stop it in fat here. Okay, hang on. So when they say overstood, that means they've gone a little bit too far with the ley line, but I think they wanted to make sure they got went a little bit further, gain. get that pressure Absolutely. coming to the mark and avoid that tack. Right. But in doing so, they've actually given Luna Rosser a chance to oh, get a few right metres back on here. It's all about who's going to have the best that. pressure out of this top half. Use that right that you did. Good yeah, comeback by wheel. the yeah, Italians. Yeah, this race is not over. This is a one mistake away, race right three, now, Stephen. Two, one. Any on Team UK around the yeah, top gate for the final yeah. time. Their yeah, no, no. advantage at the last yeah. gate was the some 26 three, seconds. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, that lead three, has been three, cut. Two, 12 two, seconds three, now. Three, Luna Rossa, Prada two, Pirelli are not going two, away. Boundary is 15. Yeah. Scary moment for the Brits. Complete split on the race course right now. And honestly, a great moment for the Italians. At this stage, you've got to take a little chance, although it looks like they're sailing into pressure right in front of them. Check out the powerhouses going there. These guys have only got the six grinders, remember? Oh, the angle, Charles. Got so it. that they can have okay, more people good. dedicated to flying and trimming the boat to free up Giles Scott to make these decisions. So I bet you they're lucky, they're happy they've only got one race today, those six grinders. <laughs> you can imagine the grinder saying, yeah, thanks for that, Ben. Yeah. yeah, we don't have to tack on them, don't worry. Can we just stretch it out to the other side of the race course? Nice gain by Ineos. They choose the top, the gate at the top mark correctly, apparently at this stage, and uh, pop out to a little bit bigger lead. Pressure looks all right here. Average heading. Copy. I don't think he'll get one and in to finish there. Take a little sure, power on the water. Is there, is there an opportunity here, wind-wise, for Luna Rossi to get back into this one? Oh. <laughs> Nathan, I mean, to me, Ineos now looks like they're on the right jive. There's quite a lot of pressure coming from the left-hand side of the track. They look, in, they look in the best spot. I think also, when we're talking about Ineos, only having six grinders allows them to have two pilots, uh, Luke Parkinson and Lee McMillan. So, you know, they're stable all the time. Whatever is going on, they've got, you know, two guys working on it. And that, in, a, in a day like today, it's a massive bonus. Michelle, that's yeah. a good point, okay, particularly in these waves, having dedicated well, flight right. controllers, you know, it's, um, it's a big deal, and I'm just impressed with how they turned this around, that race that got abandoned right. on the back foot, and they got back into this after trailing on the first lap. Lost both starts today, and uh, still have a nice little lead, but again, it's a one mistake lead. You splash down and get caught off your foils, or you get out of phase here badly, and uh, things could get close very quickly. Trip, 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 trip. They're running out of time on the Italian boat. They are running out of time. Splash down by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli coming home. Not what they wanted. As you can see, Ineos Team UK setting up for the final jive for the finish. 
go easy on the turn right on the, these couple of drives. Yeah, I'll make one more drive to go here, boys. Yeah. Okay. Further here. Okay, set up. Happy. Ready. Crossing. Yeah. Happy. Ready. Happy. Yes. Two, one, board down. Turning. Nice and smooth. Nice. Okay, okay. Good. Okay, board. Good there. My wheel. My pitch. Pitch is pitch. Okay, building here. This is course. Copy. Okay, down and touch. One and in, Stephen. Looks easy now. Take her home. Okay, be a two more turn up. So after Nothing. a restart and a reset, it's turned into yeah. a peach. Okay, awesome. For the awesome, Team UK, well, they go okay, 4 down. and 0 in the Prada Cup Challenger Series. Okay, turning up. Okay, turning up. Okay, there's one more turn up. Okay, turning 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 up. 18 seconds the margin and now they have to rethink because they've got another race to come but boy oh boy Ineos, four and oh three passes in that race as a fan of sailing that's all you can ask for blowout victories are no fun to talk about in the booth nathan or, or no fun to really watch no matter how far fast the boats are this is boat racing. These boats have all gotten really close in speed, and a, a three-pass race is reasonably rare and a lot of fun. Yeah, it didn't look like there was a huge speed difference between those two boats. It came down to who was picking those shifts, executing the manoeuvres, and hats off to Jar Scott, Ben Ainsley, and the whole crew for uh, picking that one back. Confirmation of the result of race two in round robin two. And Ineos Team UK with an 18 second win over the challenger of record. Ineos Team UK are unbeaten so far. Well, this came back to that pushing versus leading time moment in time. And again, Ben Ainsley decides to go beyond Jimmy Spithill, who is the starting helmsman here when they're on start attack, go beyond and decide to start pushing back toward the line. That means he thinks that Spithill is probably a little early and vulnerable. But again, Spithill does a nice job slowing the boat down, getting himself into position this looks a little scary for Ineos, but it's actually a reasonably dominant position for this reason. Look at that. You just suck right up. The boat on the left comes right up and forces Ainsley into attack away. Initial advantage goes to Prada. But after a couple passes, pass once, pass twice, it's back to Prada again. We think we have a super even boat race from a boat speed standpoint. Nathan, this, this race is all about the wind shifts. It was about the wind shifts and it was about if you're in front trying to get in phase, you know, staying close to the other team. And this is the moment here where Luna Rossa don't have a big enough lead to tack. Ineos are on a left hand shift. They're on the lifted tack, they're doing less distance. That's that's critical in these races. You've got to get in phase with the wind speed and the wind direction. And as we get to the top, well, what do we have? We have a dead heat. But this maneuver is what impressed me the most. The tack rolling into a bear away and going back where you came from, where you made that game, setting up the split, and now it's Mother Nature, you know? Is it the left side of the course, the right-hand side of the course? Who's gonna come out best out of this? And as we, put, as we go further down the run, you'll see what happens, that Ineos have taken the lead. And at this moment now, it's just a balance. Do you sail the competitor or do you sail the wind? And they mixed it nicely. Came through the finishing line with a okay, nice, awesome comfortable win in the end. Down. 18 seconds, the race win for Ineos Team UK. Thumbs up, congratulations, back slaps, why not? On a day where the wind have, conditions have been all over the place, they have controlled it in race number two and are simply 4 and 0. Oh. It is the race that will complete round robin phase number two, race three, American Magic, and the challenger of record, Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli.
And that's a situation where American Magic fans don't want to see it. I don't know we're well away from the start of this race, but that's not what they want to be. They don't want to be becalmed. I actually want to go down to Shirley Robertson in our chase boat because Shirley really late change on the jib for American Magic. What did you make of that? Well, we just watched that feature on the weatherman uh, about the meteorologist uh, that the teams have. You know, it's a big decision, but they're getting data from probably the other side of, of um, the North Island. They know what's coming and they're leaving that decision as late as possible. This is a big race for this team, Stephen, where, you know, the last race was a real vindication for a lot of the decision making on the British boat. I mean, the fact that they decided to design the whole drivetrain to free up their talent. On this boat, they've done the opposite. I mean, I'm really hoping that they come out and, and show the talent that they've got, that we hear good communications, good tactical decisions. But this race course is difficult. We've seen that, and it's about joining the dots. It's about sailing well. It's about getting your head out of the boat. Thank you, Shirley. Well, here we go. Kenny, American Magic, they are a team under pressure. There is no denying that. What do you want to see today from this boat? I want to see a good start, first of all. Good start. Uh, just strong decision-making by Dean Barker in the start. He has struggled to get off the starting line, albeit it's been, you know, light, weird conditions, but timing hasn't been perfect that time. Let's see a good start and then let the boat do its thing. On the other hand, Nathan, you know, Luna Rosa, we, we make a lot of, hey, oh, the physical part of they just sailed. But now they know the race course right now, right? They know the race course better than anybody. They just went around it. So they should have a pretty good idea of what they're looking for to try to stay in phase with the wind shift. I'd almost think they've got the advantage. They've done one and a half races and uh, they know where the shifts are. Whereas American Magic, well, they've just been watching. They've just been, you know, hoping that they can work it out. But I think there's a bit of an issue with Luna Rosser. I think they're having some software issues right now. I've been hearing them trying to communicate with the race committee. You heard Jimmy Spittle a moment ago saying, where is the race start? Two minutes and 19 and seconds and counting. It'll be American Magic with port entry. Luna Rossa with starboard entry. And American Magic allowed to enter at two minutes and 10 seconds. And two minutes, of course, for Luna Rossa. Both boats are way out of position right now, aren't they? Wow. We really wanted Dean Barker to be on time on this when he's anything but on time. Over 20 seconds late, but the amazing thing is, well, yeah, Luna Rosa, we're going to see a dial-up. We could see an easy starboard tack, the boat on the right-hand side on starboard tack. Oh, tripping over themselves. All right, flag, flag. Oh. Down, 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 down. Oh, down. Coming back up, coming up. Protest by the Italians. We're going to see the Americans in trouble here right now, is my guess. But Luna Rossa off the foil. Take off. Take off. Forget about him. Wait, take off again, please. Cross in. Big easy. Another bad pre-start entry by American Magic. Three in a row now. Both boats are off the foils. Yep. Stay on. Boats down. Who can get up on the foils that. first? And we'll there's the plenty of breeze out there, here. and it, Luna Rosa already is. Attack on Lylon, probably, Kekka. Yep. Yep. What's going on on that American boat to have them so out of sync coming in? And no, no, so they, they must have deemed that Luna Rosa was moving and didn't give the other guys the opportunity to stay clear, but I'm shocked at that. Well, now that both boats are up on foil, even still, you know, American Magic are up high. They're going to jibe into position. Prada are going to be tacking into position. It's all about time on distance for both boats here. Time on distance. If the Italians do this right, they should have the advantage. Attacking. 20 seconds to go to race start of race three and round drop and two. Messi all over the place at the beginning of this pre start. But now it is race start. 10 seconds and counting. Full speed, go. Go, go. Come up, come up, come up. Please, sir. You heard Jimmy Spittle say it. Full speed, go, go, go. And we are underway. The final race in round robin phase two. This is race number three. We're on board American Magic, trailing Luna Rossa out of the gate. Yeah, well, 
once again American Magic. Just bad setup for these entries. That's the third time in a row that they've fallen off the foils in the pre-start. The low in the middle. Yeah, you can't nice be streak happy coming out with the right that, side. can you? There's also one on the bow in about 40. little drag race, American Magic hanging in there in a really vulnerable spot, but eventually Prada has the ability to tack. They're gonna go into this zone, and the Americans have to give them the opportunity, but oh, they're... Looks like he tacked early. Tacked early ahead of the boundary, with confidence that they were gonna make that cross. Races are showing to be more interesting by the moment. They're they're fooling us both here, Nathan. Fooling each other as well while they're at it. Why would the Prada boat have tacked early there? I don't quite understand. Okay, I got a theory. Maybe they're still struggling with software. That's all I can say right now. I did hear them chatting before the start that maybe they're not confident in their boundary software and they're trying to do it off the lights as opposed to software on the boat. That's my only thing I can think of. Shirley, you're on the water. How does it look from your perspective at the moment? Yeah, I think you must be right, Nathan, because we're on the left-hand side of the course. It's a massive big flat crowd. There's lots of wind. The wind has gone left also. It's almost like a sign on the water. You know, go left. So I, I, I'm sure they must have some sort of issue. So, Shirley, they've given up this left-hand side of the track and effectively given the, the strong side to their competitor. It looks like American Magic have taken the lead. You can see in this picture overhead, dark water, both boats are in it, but Lunaros are about to sail out of it. You know, it's, it's, it's lighter at the top of our screen. And the uh, breeze is up, you know, we're reading, what, 16, 18 knots on the boats here right now, so it's definitely windier than the race we had before. Nathan, this is the more wind than we've seen for a long time, and it's really dark over the land. I think maybe even more wind to come from that left-hand side. Five, three, Tight two, cross coming here. Four out of That's a beautiful lee bow, isn't it? Hopefully we're going to be able to go to a, a 3D shot at some stage here and take a look at it again. I think they tacked early on the boundary. But man, oh man, American Magic just put themselves in a dominant position. Don't get too slow if you're Dean Barker, but you like the control of the situation right now, that's for sure. Oh, I love coming here, big luck. Oh, close. It's quite aggressive by Jimmy Spittle there, and I think it backfired on him. Turning down a five, four, three, two. Protest by the Italians one, for a lot. This ought to be interesting. Top gate for the first time, and it's American Magic around the mark first, followed closely by Luna Rossa, six seconds behind. Straight into a jive out of that top mark for Luna Rossa and Prada Pirelli, so already trying to get over to that favoured side that Shirley, Shirley spotted. Shirley, is that pressure still over there? Come up. Yeah, an increase in pressure uh, and also long on this jive. So absolutely, tactically, the right thing to do was was early jive. No penalty on the lock. They took a long time to talk about that one, though, didn't they, Nathan? So explain the penalty on the the, the no penalty on the lock. Well, Jimmy Spindle, like Nathan Paul, did a very aggressive maneuver. They were the lured boat there, the, the boat downwind from, from American Magic. Maybe we can see it on a replay in a second here, but they did a they did a quick aggressive maneuver. Uh, this is this is after this is after that luff, but uh, they did a quick aggressive maneuver and pushed their button said to the jury, hey, we think they fouled us. I don't think they did. I think they were pl plenty clear, but uh, may as well go for it. It was aggressive, though. Well, if you don't want aggressive, it's going to get come from Jimmy Spittle. No, no denying that. Okay. 
So the early jibe doesn't look like it paid off. It looks like, if anything, they've lost a little bit of distance. And let's just go back and have a look at the replay once again of this laugh that happened on the first beat. So Jimmy Spittle to Lewitt here. To the right. He has the right of way, and he's going to come up quite aggressively here in a second. Here he goes. He starts coming up, trying to laugh. Dean Barker. Boats don't get close enough. I'm thinking that's why the green flag came eventually, but that little lucky you see him coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Roll up. Keep coming up. Coming up. Coming up. I don't know, I think he was clutching at straws there, to be honest. That's, that's, called, a, that's, that's called a Hollywood. That means you're, you're just, you're, you're kind of acting into that one and you're hoping to fool somebody. <laughs> that was, that nobody, we didn't get fooled, that's for sure. That The uh, jury, the jury, uh, uh, Richard Slater and, and his team clearly made the right decision there. Wow, look at that rain on the on board shot. There's plenty of rain coming across, of course. Shirley, are we going to get wet out there soon? <laughs> We're getting wet, I can confirm we're, we're getting wet. Um, and more, the wind's gone more to the left, so it's been really hard for American Magic to get, you know, to get back over. I'm just watching them um, jibe now. They made a good gain. I mean, they've been, they have been fast on this downwind leg. Probably JK. It's going to be a JK up there. We're a team. Here we go. Bottom gate for the first time, and American Magic in conditions that are challenging everyone. Getting around it. It was six seconds at the top Follows. gate. Golden speed here for the tag, 20 to boundary. And 13 He's seconds at the bottom, so they've made a okay, wee two. gain. One more down. Good the way Both boats rolling straight into attack out of the bottom mark. Dean Barker here. Along with tactician Terry Hutchins said, we'll be not letting them get a sniff into this race. But having said that, a bit of leverage out to the, the right-hand side for Luna Rossa. Any right-hand shift now is a gain for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, and they could be back in this one in a, in a jiffy. Surely it's from, from our vantage point, though, all kidding aside. It looks squally out there. Little rain squalls, big wind shifts. Is there anything that's predictable at this stage? It's raining, the left hand side of the course, it's raining and it's dark and it's windy and it's sunny on the right hand side. We've got lots of weather here in New Zealand, I can confirm, I can confirm that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I mean, you would think you would protect the left hand side where the rain is, but we'll see how it rolls. Tactician Terry Hutchinson also in his grinding duties. There's been plenty of ma that has been made of this. There's Dean Barker asking him his decision. Where do they want to go on the race course? He's struggling with his comms, I think. It, Dean nice, keeps yeah. asking him questions. I didn't see okay. Terry's mouth, lips moving there, so it's like he, he doesn't hear him. Either he doesn't hear him or he's thinking hard about it. Took his sunnies off. He's trying to get a better look. Yeah, I think this is comms are out and we're not hearing them probably. I'm happy where we are. He's boundary light on, standing by, could he? Luna Rossa very close to that boundary on that far side. And boundary penalty Italy. Boundary penalty Italy. There you go, out of bounds. That's going to be expensive. That's not what you need when you're behind. It's going to be fascinating to find out after this race is over whether they're, whether they're comms. Uh, Italy, you have about one boat length to go. Are working. We've seen a couple shaky situations where Luna, Rosa, including the very first tack of the race, penalty clear, penalty clear. where Luna Rosa attacked in kind of a weird spot, and it almost kind of looks like you called, Nathan, that they don't know exactly where the boundary is on that onboard computer. Well, it definitely looked like on that first tack that they tacked too early, and they really sort of handed the, the advantage of that left-hand side of the course to American Magic. You see in the background here, American Magic steaming out to the left-hand side of the track, over to that pressure, into the good, strong pressure on the left-hand side of the course. You think about tacking around as Ripping up wind at the moment. Okay, standing by here, we're getting close to the boundary. Yeah, copy. Two, 
Bad boy down. Turning. Turning on the down. Heading towards the halfway point in this third race, the final race in Round Robin 2 between American Magic. Desperate for their first win of the Prada Cup against Luna Rossa, who have one in the bag. We're hoping today to pick up another two, but beat by Ineos in the, the earlier race. But I've got to say one thing. These crews are working ah, hard. One or two. Super hard. And that left side of the race course, like Curly, uh, Shirley called, uh, clearly dominant. Follow the rain squall when in doubt. And that's apparently what these guys have done and developed a nice little lead. Pace it up. Pacing it up, Colby. Coming in, please. Keep coming down. Rounding in three. American Magic at the top gate for the second time. They led by 13 seconds at the bottom. Have Luna Ross made any gains on the upwind leg? Touched 48 knots going around that corner. Nearly 60 miles an hour. Sonic Chicago, he looks like he's going light over there. Yes. No gains, the deficit increases for Luna Rosa to 27 seconds, losing 14 seconds on the upwind leg. That was all that left-hand side, Dean Barker, Terry Hutchinson, just protecting that no, side. They went right. around the bottom arc, went further, got onto the boundary, and every time Jimmy and Bruni tried to get back out to the left, they just face them, just send them back to the wrong side. And if you keep sailing like that, you're not gonna let them have a sniff. Right At some stage, we're going to have to ask Jimmy Spithill why they call that maneuver when they go around the mark, put both boards down and roll into a jive. Why is it called a Chicago? We definitely need to find out Any the hits? reason behind that. <laughs> Shirley on the water. American Magic looks strong today. They do, Stephen, and I, I, I'm curious to see the analysis of stats when the race is over because to me it looks like they've got wheels, they've got a little bit of extra, both upwind and downwind, and when they when they get free from the other boat, they do seem to be descending. Currently rocking it around 42, 43 knots. They, as Nathan say, are steaming on this race course. I'd prefer, I like to call it honking down the course. They're honking. You could use lots of different words for going <laughs> fast, couldn't you? But <laughs> let's put it this way. Those small foils that were their Achilles heel yesterday are coming into their own today. And the breeze is 15, 16 knots, gusting a little bit more than that. And this is when that team knows they're going to be fast. Everyone knows that so they're a the quick team here. And uh, they're making the most of it, aren't they? So a big dark cloud over Dean Barker's right shoulder. They're still going to be looking at that left side of the race course. Very, very light beyond there. Yeah, I don't think we go too far, man. No, no, definitely not. He's going to have to watch him out of the tank. Probably turning, turning up in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. American magic around the bottom gate. It was... 27 seconds at the top gate. What will the gap to Luna Rossa be here? Okay, standing by. Dropping. Dropping. Well, I suspect it's going to grow because American Magic did that downwind in one jibe. They went boundary, jibe, laid in, and Luna Rossa are going to have to do it in three jibes. So each maneuver is going to cost you time around the racetrack. And, and that big left hand three, shift, two, one, it, it's almost down. a fetch at this stage. It's not quite a fetch, but. Uh, that big left-hand shift has certainly made this a one-sided racetrack. Very much a follow the leader course, isn't it? Two more round up this one. Yes, we don't have much. Oh, three, two, oh, one. They okay, turn it up. Luna Ross of 42 hey, seconds behind at the fourth gate. You heard Jimmy, Jimmy Spitt go, oh, and I yeah. think for a moment there, you saw how close they were to that, that markable went, oh, hang on a minute. They were close. They, the outside wing of that, of that spin, that starboard, that starboard side spin was close. 
Man, this I, these guys have a bunch of times they've seen almost skittish in this race. We were talking about how smooth they were in the first race in the breeze. Flatter water, they should be even smoother, you would think, but every once in a while they, they look like they're kind of tripping, like almost skittish on the water. I, I wonder if they do have an internal problem. Yeah, it's a good question. It's not the same boat that we saw in the first race that got abandoned. It's definitely not the same boat that we saw in the race earlier today. And, man, um, a bit of head scratching going on in that program right now, as you can imagine. Shirley, you're on the water. You're, you got, you're following them around closely. Can you verify that Luna Rossa are struggling more than what they were in the previous race? Yeah, I mean, the boat just feels really, it looks really unsettled. And, you know, we haven't seen that earlier in the day. We're right beside uh, American Magic at the moment, um, protecting that left-hand side. It's raining on the beaches of the North Shore, and so they're about to come into to rain and more wind and doing exactly the right thing, you know, protecting the left-hand side of this last upwind leg. Shirley, I hate to ask the obvious question. Is there any chance that this weather is going to prevent this race from finishing? Is there any erratic weather that's going to make a chance for Luna Rossa to get back into it? <laughs> uh, because I'm an expert meteorologist. I'm just putting you on the spot. You're, you're our eyes on the water. Any chance? You know, we're, we're, we're clinging at straws to get Luna Rossa back into this race. It is, we're hard left in the camera boat now, and it's uh, really quite strong, and it is further left, but I don't think it's anything like we saw earlier in the day, but expect a, you know, a big change on, particularly on the downwind leg. So Shirley was calling rain on the North Shore, but you look at the fans watching this on the big screens in the America's Cup Village. Well, actually, in come the raincoats, but they're loving it. American Magic looking hopefully for their first win. There are some ma Magic fans in the house. Yeah, we love it too. Don't you worry about that. Stay dry though. Heading towards the top gate for the last time. 35 knots, American Magic. This will be a huge weight off the shoulders if they continue on and win this race. Well, uh, tactically, they're sailing well today as well. You know, we, a lot is being made of Terry's position on the boat and his position and not only as a tactician, but as a grinder. But unfortunately, we can't hear him because uh, his comms are down. Uh, but we've heard a lot from Paul Goodison, a lot from Andrew Campbell. Sorry, just to interrupt the elevated voice here. Hard bearaway coming up. American Magic flying into that gate for the final time. And they were for a little squall here. Whoa, Trouble in the American Magic! And they are over! You can hear the elevated voices going into that one. No rush. Wow. Three, four. Stand by attack. Stand by attack. Go attack. 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 Two. One. Three, four. Try and get some comms to see if everyone's okay on board. Luna Ross attacking. You're taking it easy here at the moment as well. Yeah, yeah, Big puff must have here. come across the cliff. Jimmy, Jimmy, the, the race is abandoned when one boat comes side. The Yo, point is ours. Let's keep sailing, mate. Let's keep sailing, Yes, yes. Stand by, bear away. Yeah, yeah. easy mission. Easy bear away. You can always drop the board after, so be right. generous on the way. Three, yeah. two, come on, bearing away. Amazing, Jim. Can we get yeah, anything on else on this day? Chase boats now getting to the attention of the American Magic crew. Well, that was a big capsize, wasn't it, boys? You could see the foam off the water, so it's like, uh-oh, big squall, big squall. They, they felt it coming. That's why they tacked around that mark to try to tack around. That's nice. Nice, because it's all good. You can stay there. 
So Luna Rosa Prada Pereira will continue on. We counted all 11 people in the uh, when we had a vision of the boat, so it looked like all people were accounted for, all 11 crew members. So confirmation all crew safe on American Magic, but my word, what the heck went on? Okay, so what went on there is they were approaching the top mark and they got a big left shift increase in pressure and you could hear the elevated voices coming into that manoeuvre. They decided to attack into a bearaway. That was the manoeuvre that Ben Ainsley was doing in the previous race. That's possible and it's fine to do in 16 knots of breeze, but if that pressure was above 20 knots, that's a tough manoeuvre and you know, it's um, end result as a capsize. It's a disaster for the team. Just when you think they are going to get their first win in this Prada Cup, Quite simply, disaster for American yeah, Magic, and it literally hands the win to Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Luna Rossa is cruising here at the moment, making sure they don't tip it over as well. Well, we've got to go through that gate anyway. This is the umpires. USA has retired. USA has retired. The race is awarded uh, to uh, Italy. Is our so confirmation, yeah. Yeah. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli will get their second win of this Prada Cup Challenger race. Series. Just and when you thought you've seen it all, Stephen and Nathan, this uh, we knew this was going to be crazy, but we had no idea what the Let's definition of crazy yeah, really yeah. was, did we? That's it's quite a simply is a heart-stopping yeah, right. moment. You are in the supposed control of the race you, you need this win for your team and your organization and then that happens a capsize well it's it's not not good not good at all and um, i'm sure we'll be having a replay here in a second to have a look at what actually happened so american magic capsize and retire and this is how it unfolded okay so i started seeing the bottom of the jib flapping there and all of a sudden you see a little foam on the water a little spray coming off the water it's like oh boy this looks really windy right now all of a sudden and see that spray blowing away really hard really fast but Nathan's exact look at everything's bluffing, everything's flipped. Oh, the lured running back is still on. The lured running backstay stays on and it's hooked up against the mainsail. They can't let that mainsail out. The lured runner is still tight. The lured runner never got released. You see the main looks like it's pinned on, so it's hard up against that lured runner. The lured runner is the thing that keeps the, uh, the rig in check and the thing we keep talking about, Luna Ross want to get rid of them. It's that dark water coming across right there. They're in pressure. Elevated, elevated noise on board. You can hear it in Dean's voice. You can hear it. Runner looks like it didn't release, and oh my God, the boat turns sideways. So, so essentially, an inability to release pressure on the mainsail and say, "Pop, you're over." Sure is what it looked like to me. Nathan and I both picked it up. The mainsail was kind of a big curvature right around that shroud that goes towards the top of the mast. But the, the big question I have is, as they're approaching that mark, the easier, safer maneuver would be to bear away and jive. Instead, they did the hard manoeuvre, and I think I heard Paul Goodison say, this is going to be a difficult manoeuvre, guys. You know, the tack into a bear away. What you would do if you had a bit more time is attack, extend, and then bear away. Here we go, see them bring it up. So, once again... That's the boy Goodison trying to talk him out of it. He's trying to talk him out of it. The 
other thing was is that Dean Barker stayed on the leeward side of the boat. So he's bearing away on the leeward side. He can't see how much pressure there is. He's not looking up at the main side of seat stuck on the runner. Had Dean been on the windward side next to Paul Goodison, he might have had a chance to see the wind was stronger than he thought. He might have seen the main on the runner and he might have aborted that bail away. Drama on the Waitamata Harbour to complete round robin number two and race three. And the win goes to Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli after a capsize from American Magic. And Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli take their second point in the Prada Cup Challenger Series.